אני אלכס חיות, אני uh, מבלייזמיטר, ואנחנו נדבר על uh, Continuous Performance. אז מה אנחנו נדבר? Um, כמה דקות, uh, קודם כל זה אג'נדה, ככה ב, בגדול, בארבע בולטים עיקריים. Uh, מה אני ולמה אני בא uh, uh, לדבר איתכם, או על מה אני אדבר? נדבר על uh, מהות העניין Performance Testing ו-Continuous Delivery. Uh, performance Testing זה מה שאני עושה בשנים האחרונות uh, כחלק מהחברה uh, שבה אני עובד, בלייזמיטר ו-Continuous Delivery זה מה שעושים uh, כולכם, אני מניח, עם ג'נקינס. נראה איפה העסק הזה נפגש. Uh, נדבר על ה-Testing uh, Strategies, על הפרטים. נראה קצת לפרטים, נראה כלים שיכולים לעזור פה, נראה איזה אסטרטגיות של, ה- של העבודה uh, אפשר לאמץ. ובסוף... Uh, uh, שאלות, תשובות, מה שתרצו. השיחה שלנו לא תהיה על בלייזמיר, על חברה שבה אני עובד, נדבר על זה קצת בסוף, אבל אני אשמח שככה תזרמו איתי על, על, על נושא הפרפורמנס באופן כללי, ואז נראה לאן זה לוקח אותנו. הלאה. טוב, אז שתי מילים עליי, אני VP Engineering at Blazemeter, זה אומר שאני מנהל את הפיתוח וגם את התפעול של הפלטפורמה שאנחנו מפתחים, פלטפורמה ל-Cloud Based Performance Testing. בעבר הייתי עם עוד כמה חברות, Sun, Conduct, היום HP Identify, שהיום BMC, Skybox, Zend, היו כמה דברים שהספקתי לעשות כאן. ואני אוהב אתגרים, בעיקר אתגרי פרפורמנס במה שקשור בתוכנה. Um, זה uh, המחשב שבו uh, התחלתי לתכנת uh, uh, אי שם בשנת 86, uh, שזה הקלון הרוסי הסובייטי של uh, PDP-11, אני מניח שיש פה כמה חבר'ה שמכירים את זה. Uh, uh, זה המחשב שיש אצלי היום. Uh, בין שני אלה יש בערך 30 שנה והרבה דברים השתנו, אבל שני אתגרים נשארו, uh, uh, נשארו uh, נכונים ורלוונטיים. גם אז וגם היום. ולשניהם משותף דבר אחד, פרפורמנס. זה פרפורמנס של תוכנה שאנחנו מפתחים, כמה מהר היא תעבוד, כמה, טוב, כמה מהר היא תגיב לדרישת המשתמש וכולי, ופרפורמנס של צוותי, צו, צוות הפיתוח. כמה מהר צוות הפיתוח או מתכנת בודד או קבוצה יוכלו לפתח את התוכנה ולהביא אותה אל המשתמש. <coughs> שני הנושאים האלה יהיו בסיס לשיחה שלנו היום. אוקיי, ובכן, אני אעבור לאנגלית כי רוב המצגת באנגלית ונשמע לי מטופש לתרגם אותה כל שקף ושקף, אז let's move on. Great digital experiences demand high performance and this is the key Uh, uh, for this presentation. The idea is that we are uh, connected, constantly connected to internet, to services that it provides us. I have this uh, mobile phone that's now in my bag. We have a computer that's connected to internet. My uh, watch is connected to internet as well. I mean, everything is connected and everything is consuming some services. Behind every mobile application today, uh, we have, except for maybe some, some extremely trivial calculator, we have a, a, an application, a website that actually provides backend API services to that app. And uh, the expectations of a performance for these applications are uh, at their highest. We can say that uh, according to the survey conducted by Akamai, the uh, CDN, leading CDN company, 48% of people expect pages to, be lo- to load under two seconds. That's quite a lot. 30% of people exp- expect uh, uh, pages uh, to load within one second, which is even more. And uh, 18% don't bother with uh, numbers, they simply said instant. So the 3% that are left, I guess, simply didn't understand the question, but the thing is that uh, like 97% of people accept uh, two seconds on far or faster performance from the website or application they, uh, uh, they face. So performance is crucial. According to a survey prov- uh, conducted by another CDN, and CDN guys are uh, uh, very well Uh, uh, oriented to performance and services. As it seems, Limelight shows a story, a a survey that says uh, that people consider application to be sluggish if it responds in less than a second, uh, more than a second, and up is working, like, oh, it's working, it's doing something, uh, uh, even after half a second response. So performance is critical, and it relates both to uh, uh, cloud-based SaaS uh, web applications and to uh, mobile apps that we deal with. 
Let's look at the uh, other side of the equation that we started with, the um, software development cycle. Software development cycle in a, a classic waterfall flow looks like this, more or less. We had an idea, we analyze it, design it, and then we go into something that finally has bidirectional errors here. Uh, errors here. We have development and test, and this can be interconnected and have more than one cycle. Uh, but after all, it goes to test, and then it's almost ready to be released. And when does the load of performance testing fit into this picture? Exactly at the end of the flow, where this little, uh, uh, little uh, uh, black box we have. Uh, and this block symbolizes two things. First of all, we test for performance too late in the cycle, and second, we usually test it as a black box. We don't really understand what's going on and why. We simply try to, uh, to hit it as hard as we can and measure what, what's going on. Why is it happening this, uh, like this? Because performance testing for years has been a complicated task that involves a lot of people, that involves domain expertise, that involves knowledge and uh, uh, complex labs. You, you gotta set, set up uh, sometimes uh, tens or, or hundreds of, uh, of computers, install dedicated software on them, uh, uh, spin up a, a, a test on them, collect information, uh, digest it, and so on. This is a lot of work to do. And usually, uh, it ended up like uh, this, war room tests, uh, where people, this is an actual war room, or some not nice picture by NASA, but the thing is that a, a typical load or performance test in these days, if done the old school, the old way, uh, uh, looks similarly, but in a virtual room. Um, from time to time, I'm attending some of these tests with my customers, and just last week, I've been on a call where together with me on a bridge, there were almost 30 people. People that represented uh, different divisions within a customer, like developers, testers, uh, uh, DevOps uh, folks. Uh, uh, there was a, a couple of folks from, uh, uh, from CDN company, from Akamai, who were monitoring uh, uh, how this performance test on uh, Akamai's website hits the, uh, uh, hits the CDN network. Uh, and obviously, was a, 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 there was a, a, I was there also listening. But 30 people on a bridge means basically that if, if everything goes well, and it happens, uh, uh, so the test does not discover any a, a big problem in performance of the application, we move on to the next stage, we release the product. But if, if things get broken, if, if, if the application does not perform well, what happens is that all these 30 people will, will have to gather again in a week or two when the developers fix the problem, when DevOps maybe find the, 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 the glitch in the infrastructure, and this is time-consuming and effort-consuming process. Software development life cycle has been like this, or more or less like this. I, I, I guess you've seen uh, all uh, versions of this, uh, of this cycle, uh, of this circle uh, uh, over the day-to-day. -day. We've been coding stuff and building it and then testing it and deploying it and monitoring what's going on uh, uh, for years now. The major thing that's changed, there are two things that changed over, over the years. One is we rarely ship the application we develop on a CD, on, on a media anymore. We consume the apps as a mobile apps or as a web as software as a service. So instead of live shipping, we have deploy and monitor here. And the time frame. The applications are developed now at a, a, a completely, completely different pace. Once we did things in weeks, then it went to days, and now we are hours, and actually we are expected to deliver applications or fixes to production in minutes. And uh, uh, this is, I guess, uh, uh, something that uh, uh, you've heard here with uh, uh, Jenkins and continuous, uh, continuous delivery, continuous, uh, continuous integration theme. But this is the reality for both for, uh, for my company, for the companies you work with, and for, my, for many of our customers. So what do we do, how we uh, 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 meet these two ends, how we make the team perform fast as it is required and deliver a product that is, uh, uh, that is able to meet the expectations, the performance expectations. The solution is uh, shift left. Shift left uh, means shift performance testing left in the flow. We have uh, this flow where we are testing things, the new code is being tested, uh, uh, the new code is being developed, then it is built, then it is deployed, and then it, it is finally in production. Performance testing the old way falls somewhere here, around deployment. Whenever application faces the uh, production environment, then it's being tested on a pre-prod or staging or whatever you call it. It's testing, the tested for performance, and we all pray and hope that we won't find any, any big issues. Now we are talking shift left. Take this to the left. 
test performance for every build, test performance for every code change. And this is what I'm going to talk and show in the next, uh, uh, next few minutes. So first step, let's shrink the time frame. This is an easy to implement flow. This is an easy, easy idea. First of all, let's integrate performance tests into the Agile cycle. We're running through development cycle uh, uh, through Jenkins or a similar continuous integration tool. You uh, uh, take a commit, you build an application, you deploy it, and why not to test it? When we do it at the end of sprint, end of sprint could be weekly, bi-weekly, every three weeks, whatever you work, uh, you, you work with Agile cycle, whatever Agile cycle works for you, we can uh, uh, do this at the end. Why is it easy, e easy to do? Because it doesn't change the idea uh, much. I mean, we are doing the same thing that we've done uh, in past, but more frequently, more often, and uh, hoping for better results. How use CI tools, uh, Jenkins, to trigger performance tests? Um, quick switch of the screens to see how this can be done. Let's switch to this one. We have a, oh, hold on, this is not, the one I needed now. Where is my Chrome? Okay, so this is the uh, 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 this is the Jenkins. Hold on. How come I don't see it here? It's a mess. Apparently. Okay. So this is a Jenkins build, and this is my application, my uh, my my blaze meter. My blaze meter application. I have a test here called Jenkins demo Tel Aviv. It was running for for a few times already. And it delivers uh, 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 the metrics, the major metrics I'm looking in the performance test. I'm running on, on a web application. This test uh, runs on a simple, uh, simple web application that we use for testing. It's a simple travel agency app. It lets you do a uh, few, uh, few things like pick up your, your uh, pick up your destination, just a demo for, uh, uh, for, for testing or showcasing our, our application. So here is the build, J J Jenkins job and build. And uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is I, I have added a step called blaze meter, which basically means you can uh, start and go and trigger your test, the same test you're seeing here, from, uh, from Jenkins directly. At the end of the run, it will download the full detailed report of the test, and it will also download unit test like report, the X unit report. This means that you will be able to, tra to, tra uh, to track uh, uh, performance of your test using typical uh, Jenkins tools like performance plugin, JUnit plugin, and stuff like this. So I can either trigger it now or switch to, uh, yes, of course, I want to leave this. OK, so this is what I had. I have a few builds here, and most of them were successful. But last one was a failure. And this is the last build that failed a while ago. And it failed because it was too slow. Uh, it has one failure, and this failure meant that uh, one of the conditions that I have defined uh, uh, were, were not met. I can trigger another one to see if, 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 if it gets any better, but uh, let's see. Let it run here. It begins to run. We can switch and go to console output. Jenkins falls you, falls you know how it works. So it checks out some code and then it takes, it, it runs, it, it, it spawns a blaze meter test, which will be, uh, which will be shown here. Blaze meter report, where is it? I can watch this test executed live. So it runs now, it will run for a couple of minutes, and then we'll stop, and I will see the, the, the indication. So let's get back to the main flow. So what we have done, pros and cons, what we took an existing test base, we took an existing test that we had, an existing performance test that was implemented in this case using a, a, a JMeter script. JMeter is one of the popular uh, uh, performance testing tools and uh, implemented it through uh, Jenkins as a part of my continuous pipeline. It shows real performance because it's deployed live and it, it finds problems before the application meets customers. So it delivers what we want it to. It gives us a good indication, it catches problem. But there are a few things that we can, we can start with but. First of all, it's still the old approach. It's still once a, once a week, once a day, once a, 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 once a two week, once a sprint approach. Which means that uh, whenever a problem is discovered, 
developers are already out of context. They already have new deadlines, they, have, uh, they, they are working on different features, different tasks, and the fix is expensive. Uh, the fix is difficult. So we end up with shortcut solutions. Since developer is already busy with some other task, what happens is uh, it, we might end up implementing some uh, workaround, some small solution that will just help us to overcome this limitation and get release out of the door, but it's not really a good solution for us to, to, to deal with. And also one thing, another thing is, this, is, this helps us to catch big mistakes, major problems. Something that suddenly made your application two times slower, five times slower. But it's, it does not deal with what we call millisecond creep. Millisecond creep is smaller, ch small changes that every time on every build or every few builds add you another millisecond or few of a response. This approach will not catch it. So let's move to the next level. Find the millisecond creep. Each code change, potentially, can add just a millisecond or two to application's response time. And what happens at the end, they add up. And they add up by slowing your application and frustrating your users. The solution is to test for performance ear earlier. In the, earlier in the pipeline, let's shift left. Look at this. This means we need to get, test, uh, to get developers involved in testing. Test by developers, not only by testers, not only by experienced uh, uh, performance engineers, also, developers can find issues in performance. So the, the idea is simple again. Run performance tests on every code change, or on most of the code changes. Record and track performance metrics. As they, as they teach us in the Army, if you don't measure it, if you don't track it, it doesn't improve. Real numbers matter much less than trends. Since this is going to run your, your application in a smaller environment, usually development environment, it will not perform as you expect it in real production. You have a smaller server, you have busier servers, you have one server instead of a dozen. It, 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 it will behave differently. But one thing will remain constant. Trend will show you. If you have a stable performance here, you get, you get things right at the end. So key challenges here. Tools, we need a tool that meets the following requirements at least. It needs to be automate, automation friendly tool to fit into CI workflow. It needs to suit user habits for developers and testers. It needs to handle wide scope of tasks and it should, be, uh, and sh it should run locally as well as uh, in a CI environment or on large scale. Otherwise, it will again serve just one, uh, uh, one user or one, one stakeholder here. I'm going to talk next few minutes about, uh, s uh, about one tool that uh, we are developing or contributing to development. It's an, actually an open, open source tool called Torus. Torus stands for Test Automation Running Smoothly and, uh, or Test Automation made, made by Russians, but because most of the team is, 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 is back in Russia, but uh, again, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an open source tool. So it, is, it offers text-based configuration format that can be uh, exp uh, explained or uh, expressed in either YAML or JSON, which is simple and, uh, and, and, and convenient for everyone. It can be executed through CLI, command line uh, interface. It wraps existing tools. It wraps JMeter, Locust, uh, Selenium, uh, Gatling, Grinder, a bunch of tools, uh, almost a dozen of different tools. It provides smart and simple wrapper around these tools to hide the complexity of these tools and give you single interface to deal with them all. You can uh, uh, download it uh, from, from gettoros.org, or uh, uh, I can, uh, and, and what I'm gonna do in the next few minutes is to run a quick, quick demo on it. So let's switch to command line. Oh, again, it's not on my screen, it's only on your screen. Good. So what I have here, I, I have a couple of scenarios. And the simple scenario, the test scenario is just like this. Let's make it colorful. I have a simple scenario that has, a, that will hit two websites, two URLs here, Blaze Demo and some location, and it will think between them 0.5 seconds, meaning it will introduce some delay between them. It will run, it will run two threads, two separate users that will do the job that will uh, execute the scenario, <coughs> will ramp up for 10 seconds, and then hold the load of two users for one minute. So it's a simple thing. Start hitting these URLs, 
keep it for one minute, and that's it. Now, what I can is I can uh, I, I have it here with me on my Mac, so I can uh, set an execution details like in Mac. What I'm saying is this is my token for BlazeMeter application. Uh, it's not, not, not necessarily it works even without it. And uh, uh, push, push the reports upstream. So what all I need to do here is to run the Torus, BZT. I give it a scenario and I give it, and I give it an addition of test configuration. What happens is it begins to run. It begins to run. It begins to run. It opens for me a browser, since I'm pushing results upstream, but that's, uh, that, that's a bonus. But essentially, it starts showing you the progress in a, 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 in, in a small command line, a small uh, ASCII-based ASCII -based console. So you can see and track major parameters, and you see, uh, and you see that the progress, uh, progress bar is moving. You're getting errors or not getting errors. You're getting response time and uh, percentile uh, measurements here, uh, basically. You're, you're seeing how your test is running. So for ASCII art fans like, like I am, this is cool. But uh, uh, beyond being cool, this is a real test that runs. And simultaneously, it pushes data to the cloud mothership, meaning that if, if, if I'm more, more used to the uh, uh, web interface, I can go to the web interface, and I can see it running. This is the one running now. Let's pick, let me make sure that this is it. Yes, this is it. It, it runs now, and this is. This is the pattern that we, we, we have. It started with one user, it went up to two users as we wanted them, and now it keeps, uh, uh, keeps hitting this site until, until it, 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 uh, uh, it ends in a minute. And I can, see, I can see the performance trend here. This test didn't run for very, very, very too many times here. As you see, it only was executed three times here. So we, uh, we barely have a trend here, but the situation is it's always around 750 milliseconds, which is good. Acceptable, at least uh, for this case, given the fact that we are uh, running on, on, on the laptop in a conference. So, if I want to do the same from Jenkins, I can take and integrate this test into Jenkins flow. I can pick another job I prepared here. Let me try to find it here. Where is my Jenkins? Apologies. Hold on. It's really messy to deal with it like this. Excuse me for a sec. Mm, one sec, yeah. I'm just, I don't see it on my screen, so I'll have to pick it from here. Okay, you know what? Let me run it just like I did it in, in, uh, in command line here. When I'm running from Jenkins, I do not need this fancy report on my screen, so I can take I can take this one and say that please don't open me a browser because I won't have a browser on my Jenkins machine. Don't play me don't, don't paint me fancy ASCII art because I don't need it on, on my Jenkins machine. And all I need is uh, to push report back up, uh, back to the mothership because this is what I care about, and uh, run the same scenario. So if I'm going to run BlazeMeter Torus again with same scenario and uh, CI Jenkins, CI YAML, it will simply execute the same flow, but silently, more or less, except for, except for this piece. And uh, it, it will run and execute the same same job with uh, fr f just like it was from Jenkins. One sec, I'll spin up a Jenkins here. Where did I? Here it is. went to my screen. Oh, here it is. So this is where I have, this is where I have 
my Jenkins test that was running, if you could see from here, it was running every few minutes. And it shows up in blaze mirror like this. So I will be able to see this test was running in Jenkins every uh, more or less uh, 10 minutes. And it was providing a trend here. So this, is, this was a trend where I can, when I'm talking about trends, this is what I meant. It had uh, about 20 milliseconds response time with some, some ups and downs here. What happens here is that suddenly I have a spike. And this spike means for me that something got broken. Something is not right here. So now I'm going uh, I'm to investigate and learn about this, pro th th this problem without waiting to the end of the development cycle. This is something that can be shown uh, as part of the uh, uh, daily or hourly or even uh, uh, triggered by a code change in GitHub uh, routine. And therefore, it can be done quickly and uh, fixed by developer without, without uh, going through a long cycle. So. If you, want to, uh, uh, if you want to use this, uh, you can get Toros uh, uh, from the gettoros.org. We, uh, uh, we have it documented there. It's downloadable and, downloadable and installable within uh, more or less uh, one command. Uh, and uh, you can try it uh, uh, by yourself. So pros and cons here. First, it's a short cycle. It provides immediate feedback and therefore easy fix. If a person finds that there is a, a performance issue or any other bug immediately or close to, what, 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 to the development time, it's always easier to fix. Second, it is, it is, it is a friendly tool. We have a, a friendly flow. It, it is friendly to developers because developer can run it. It is friendly to DevOps because we can automate it with automation tools like Jenkins. And it is friendly to, uh, to QA uh, folks because they can still use the tools they used, to, uh, uh, they used earlier, like uh, JMeter or Gatling or, or, or Grinder or any performance tool that they, uh, they are used to uh, because uh, Toros can uh, 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 easily wrap them all. It reveals small problems and performance effect, affecting patterns early, or the, early in the cycle, and this is another big thing. One important note to make here is it complements, it does not replace the big event test. I mean, I wouldn't recommend anyone to go out uh, in full production with a major website, a major application based just on small development tests done. It's still worth uh, testing things in pre-production. Nobody canceled this, uh, uh, this yet, but it helps, definitely helps to speed up things and shorten the cycle of development. So if we look at the journey, at the steps that we went through uh, uh, on our way to continuous performance, we went more or less through this ladder. We uh, st spoke in the beginning about uh, uh, non-continuous, largely event-based uh, uh, tests that are set <coughs> before a major event, before software re release or deadline or um, some important date. And then we introduced a, a performance test into a agile, develop, uh, agile development flow. We are having uh, shorter cycles. We are more frequent tests at, 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 at end of every sprint or monthly and a, a beginning of automation. It simply triggers existing, existing tests and existing tools, but it's also a major step, uh, step forward. Then we're going through uh, last few minutes, we spoke about these two. Continuous integration, continuous performance. We can test every build, we can test every commit. We can uh, uh, automate everything and, uh, and find performance problems as well as uh, problems for uh, any, any other functional problems very early in the cycle. So these are the steps uh, uh, that every, more or less every organization, every software development organization I've seen is going through. Uh, and Many of us started here. We, uh, there are very few organizations, I have to admit, based on my own experience and experience with our customers, who kind of reached level three here, if I may uh, speak in levels here. But the idea is that if we move up this, uh, up this route, uh, we will get a better performing apps and a better performing teams. And this is critical to what we do as business. That's it. Um, Last slide, I think, is, uh, is about Blazemeter, the company I work for, and its logo has been here uh, on all the slides. We deliver performance testing solutions for continuous delivery era, meaning we provide a platform that helps you uh, 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 build these tools together. And uh, the logos at the bottom are more or less uh, uh, 
some of uh, notable customers of ours. As you can see, we are seeing a lot of retail companies such as Walmart, Target, Gap, and we see media companies and others. Uh, a lot of interesting cases, a lot of interesting performance problems, and uh, we help them uh, uh, solve, the, uh, uh, solve these problems. And uh, uh, glad to help you as well. Yes, of course. Uh, in order to do this, what, 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 what we do basically is if you, uh, if you want to, uh, uh, to um, simulate a real uh, usage pattern, what you can do is you need to uh, randomize or introduce some custom data. I mean, you, you cannot simply hit, just like in my example, see, hit one website. Uh, uh, this is what you can do in, with AB, Apache Bench, the uh, most powerful and the dumbest tool on, 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 on the list. It simply takes the URL and hits it. What you can do, uh, 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 for that you can write a slightly but since Torus is a wrapper around a bunch of tools, you can uh, either use Torus' own DSL language, uh, which will help. And let me show uh, some example here. One, what is my mouse? This is Torus. And this is a simple script. This is the simplest scenario that I've shown. And uh, it simply just hit this URL. We can take an existing script written with another tool, such as JMeter, OK? Pick a tool that, that for instance, uh, uh, your uh, QA folks were using JMeter, and they can now you can now take the same script, adjust its uh, uh, its parameters, such as run it on one user, one simulated user instead of hundreds, okay, and run it for a shorter time, one minute instead of uh, 20 minutes, and run it through Torus without even understanding what the JMeter means and what 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 is inside. Now, in order to introduce parameters to it. You can add additional uh, uh, files such as CSV file that will have, for instance, a bunch of usernames that uh, uh, Torus or JMeter will alternate so that not all testing is done with single username. Okay, you can add data files, and as long as your script deals with it, uh, uh, Torus will, uh, uh, we will properly execute it. And obviously, uh, uh, we provide some complex, uh, co com complex scenarios that you can go and tweak and introduce logic, such as uh, 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 introduce um, details to the, uh, uh, to the request itself and extract the responses and analyze responses, but doing this, doing complex script and this kind of DSL is not the best idea. If, you're, if your test is simple, use it here. If your test is complex, use the best tool that you can, like JMeter, could be a Gatling, could be something that allows you for some programming and let Torus orchestrate it and let Torus automate it for you. Uh, how does it integrate to Jenkins? It integrates to Jenkins through where is my job? I didn't close it yet. Okay, if, if we take a look at this uh, 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 configure, here is the thing, this is the job. It goes like this, more or less. All right, all I need is I need, since it checks out code, it checks out, since this is, these are the small files, small text files, I can keep them in the repository next to my code. And then, if a build job, if a test job, checks out the code uh, out of it, all I need to do is to, is to run the BCT, the Torus executable, and give it to uh, uh, YAML files, or two, one, two, three, five, whatever, uh, uh, they are concatenated together, uh, YAML files, that will run, will run it from, from Torus, uh, from, from Jenkins. Uh, this is, uh, BlazeMeter token is, is an option, I mean, you don't have to use it. BlazeMeter token is just, uh, uh, if you can use Torus without, if, without BlazeMeter token. It only means you won't be pushing data to BlazeMeter and, and you won't see uh, the, the defense, uh, defense reports. Okay, you will still see uh, uh, the tests executed. You will still see, uh, be able to track it in Jenkins using, uh, using Gen Jenkins built-in tools and so on. Yes, please. Uh, you were saying you were talking about the creeping milliseconds problem, yeah. and how trends are often um, more uh, easier to spot than uh, yeah. changes of a few milliseconds. But if you're running this like uh, on every build or locally on the development, so is your trend local? Is it keeping on your on my my machine like a trend, and, and every run it checks against that? Yeah, yeah. You can tr in each test that you run, you you you, you are running here. You can give it a, you can track it separately. For instance, this one, hold on, let me resize the screen. I somehow considered that the PC resolution is, 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 is not relevant anymore, but this screen is a bit somewhere. This one is, is, is the test running through Jenkins. Okay, I have decided to name it explicitly, what is it, CI1, 
it was. So this is, I'm pushing it and I'm naming it uh, Blaze Demo 109, okay? So all reports that are pushed uh, with this name will be tracked together. Yeah, this, they can simply be tracked by, uh, together. Now if I run, so, and, and, this is, and this is the trend as it looks Okay, and this, uh, these are all reports, and I have over 50 of them uh, uh, that were running, and they're, tra uh, and, and they're tracked together. So uh, in this case, particularly, I execute, I, I send different report names to track them when I'm running from my local Mac and from, from running from Jenkins, so that they do not interfere. So that peak over there, is that yeah. something that you actually saw it fixed, or was that just noise? In this, this particular one, it was my experimentation over the weekend with, uh, uh, with uh, some, 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 some error and, and, uh, and, and fix. Yeah. It depends, on, it, it depends on how close they are. The thing is that since here, I'm not sure you can see this. I'm not sure I can see this. Uh, the, again. Okay, we are talking 20 milliseconds here. Because 20 milliseconds here, it basically, because Jenkins and the target website are located very close together. Okay, they're located on the same network in the cloud, in Amazon cloud. So the response time, if for me, if it's 20 to 25 milliseconds, it's nothing. Once it spikes over 30 or over 40 here, it's something that I wanna, I wanna double check. Okay, uh, again, if, uh, when I looked at the test that was triggered from laptop, I know that from laptop because of the, uh, 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 um, latency involving, uh, I don't know what, how I'm connected here, it's over 700 milliseconds overall, so this is, uh, it, it is a longer, it is a longer round trip. Therefore, I do not want to mix Jenkins-based outputs with my local outputs. But my local outputs most probably, unless I'm uh, uh, developing code on a train or some, or, or some very bad location with very bad, bad reception, they will be uh, uh, consistent as well, more or less consistent. So you're trying to have all your slaves kind of... Yeah. More or less, yeah. I mean, I'm running this integration test in CI environment. The CI environment is more or less stable, and it has more or less stable connection to the, CI, to the slave, a Jenkins slave that runs in CI environment. Of course, I, if, if I want to introduce noise, I will introduce noise, but I, I don't want to confuse myself. It's not a silver bullet, but it's a, a, it's a viable path to a, to, to, to a good solution. Questions, answers? Thank you. Time's up. Thank you again.